writing a code plug for DMR and amateur radio into 2021. Maybe a new way that you haven't heard of before. Something we're going to talk about today, and it's coming up. Shut up and sit down. Good afternoon. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. This is Ham Radio 2.0, where we do reviews, news, and how-tos of many things that are new in amateur radio. So coming out of 2020 into 2021, which is about the time this video will post, I've been kind of tinkering around with this idea for a little bit, and I want to show you guys a new way that I'm going to program a code plug for an AnyTone radio. This is the AnyTone uh, D878UV+. Plus, it's the model that has both Bluetooth and GPS. You can use this tactic that I'm about to show you with uh, the 878, the non-plus version, the 868, the BTEC 6x2. It even works with the TYT MD UV series of radios, so the UV380 and the UV390. I assume it'll probably work with the MD2017. I did not try that one, but uh, but it definitely works with the MD uv 390 which is what this is the 380 takes the same firmware and the same uh, cps most of the time so i wanted to show you uh kind of a new idea i had now i will a small disclaimer okay it's likely i'm not the first person to ever think of this okay this is kind of like one of those things that's like obvious and I'm kind of surprised no one's talked about it. No, maybe someone is talking about it. I admittedly, I don't watch every YouTube channel out there and read every news article that comes out about DMR. But this is a new, newish, new to me. I'll put it that way. This is a new to me, new to me way to write a code plug. It's a little bit more simple. And with the features of a VFO and programming from what's called FPP front panel programming that a lot of these new radios have today. This is a feature that you can use that's uh, very easy to implement. So let's take a look over here real quick. What I've done here is I've taken the AnyTone code plug, okay? So the, the long and short of it is I'm programming two channels per repeater, okay? So I've got my, I've got my complete list of digital contacts in here. I did a video a while back about programming a, a code plug. We did a lot. Frank and I did a live stream one Sunday night a few months back. So I've got the most recent contact list loaded in here. This option right, this this list right here, I had offered for download to anybody who wanted it, and I've updated this list since the live stream that Frank and I did. And there's a few more talk groups in here now. So the, the important thing to remember, if you're going to follow this process, there's about 151 talk groups in this list right now. The important thing to remember, if you're going to follow this process, is that you want to get a talk group list that contains everything that you might want to talk on. You can see right there, that one's got 151 different talk groups. It includes the 51 statewide talk groups in the USA. The 51st being uh, Washington, D.C. They have their own statewide talk group. Um, Puerto Rico has some talk groups, but they don't call them statewide. Um, U.S. Virgin Islands, same thing. Create a list, or you can download. I'll, I'll put a link below in the dis YouTube description of this video where you can download this list. That's just the talk groups. That's all it is, the talk groups. And then what you want to do is you want to come through the talk group list here and basically create a channel. You can see right here that, that uh, this channel name column right here. I've got KC5, HWB1 and 2. This is this column right here, if you can see the mouse moving. I got my TGIF spot and my open spot. It's important to know that I've got two different hotspots and they're on two different frequencies. So that's important. I'll explain that a little bit in, in, in a minute. This is Anna 1 and 2. That's a repeater out here in Anna, Texas. Arlington 1 and 2. Aubrey 1 and 2. Carrollton 1 and 2. Corsicana 1 and 2. And Dallas AB5U 1 and 2. There's multiple repeaters in Dallas, so I put the uh, repeater trustee's call sign after the name of the repeater. So what I do is I go in here and I say, okay... I've got my TGI, or this is my KC5 HWB backyard repeater. The frequency I have is 440.5125. That's the offset. Um, that's my color code and my time slot. And my, um, and my talk group is North Texas wide right here. That's what I've got set there. So the reason I create two 
channels per repeater is really kind of two reasons. Number one, because the, the radio that we're talking about right here is a dual display radio. So I can monitor and listen to two channels at the same time. Also with DMR, if you're talking about a repeater, uh, DMR repeaters are dual time slots. So you can listen to and monitor two time slots at the same time. Now only one talk group can be active at the same time on the time slot. But if a repeater is silent and you cho and you set your radio to listen to one specific talk group, and then you turn on what's called monitor mode on the AnyTone or some or on the uh, old TYT older TYT radios is called promiscuous mode. Then it'll listen to anything on that time slot anyway, so it won't matter where you are. About the only place I could I could see that this new process I'm about to show you would not work is if you do a bunch of scanning. If you're scanning channels across multiple talk groups on multiple repeaters, including digital and analog, this might not be best for you. I don't do a lot of scanning on my DMR radio. You can use monitor mode and promiscuous mode to listen to all the time slots on a repeater. And that typically, I don't put very many analog channels into my DMR radios unless I'm, you know, I, I, I've got a few in there. I've got a few of our local repeaters in there. But it's, they're not something I really monitor a whole lot unless I'm going out with a group of people I know we're all going to be talking on this repeater. So if you're really big into scanning and creating scan lists, this might not work for you. But take a look at it anyway and let me know what you think. So what I do is instead of having, you know, if, for instance, on my, on my backyard repeater, I've got probably 30 or 35 talk groups connected to this repeater. And of course, if you're on Brandmeister, you've got hundreds of talk groups on, on most repeaters. So rather than programming a channel for every talk group, which is traditionally what you would do, I program two channels, one on time slot one, which is right here, and the next one on time slot two, which is right here, that actually should be a two. TGIF. Of course, your hotspots are usually going to be on time slot two, unless, of course, you've got a dual time slot hotspot. There's Anna one, the channel name, on slot one, and then Anna two on slot two. Arlington one on slot one. Arlington two on slot two, and et cetera, et cetera. So what I do is I take that, and then... I will I will build a zone, and I just called the zone North Texas. And of course, you know you can you can name a zone after your state. You can name it after your area. You can name it however you want to. And I'll probably create one for South Texas. Maybe create one for Galveston, Houston area, something like that. And then you add, and then all of these channels that I have in the code plug right now. It's this is a brand new code plug I just started, so I don't have a lot in there right now. But all these channels are in the North Texas area, the Dallas-Fort Worth, North Texas area. You know, the open spot and the TGIF spot, you, of course, you can put anywhere you want to. I could create a separate zone for hotspot if I wanted to. Hey, if you're finding value from this video and this instructional series, click the thumbs up for me and subscribe below. If you don't mind, it does help with the YouTube algorithm. Let's get back to it. So now what I can do, let's get this view going over here. I can go into the radio and I can say, okay, so North... KC5HWB1 is the name of my channel. So if I turn the channel knob, you see that changes there. And the North Texas, the, the white text under the you can customize all this text, all the color text here. This is one of the cool things about the AnyTone radio. So this is North Texas. North Texas is the name of the zone right now. And then you'll see it'll, it'll flip back. NTX wide is the name of, of the talk group that this channel is programmed on. So I can talk on North Texas wide on this channel and I can change it to the same repeater. And I can say, okay, so KC5 HWB2 is my second channel for that same repeater and I'm on Texas statewide. So I can monitor both, or I can monitor both time slot one and time slot two at the same time. And then if I want to change something, if I say, okay, I'm on, this is my time slot one. I know because I got a one after it. This is my time slot two. And of course you can name it whatever you want to. But if I want to change something, I go into the menu and the very first option is talk group. And I go in here and say talk group list. And I want to change it to, let's say I want to change it to TAC 310. Then I can select that, select contact, contact selected, back out of it. And now my KC5 HWB1 on the North Texas zone is on TAC 310. 
So when I key up the radio, it's going to key up TAC 310 on my repeater. So that eliminates the need to hold a bunch of channels in your code plug. So now creating code plugs is going to be even that much quicker because all you have to do is create, and you don't have to do two channels. You can do just one channel for a repeater. That way, if you, if you say, well, I've got two repeaters near me. I'll listen to that one. I'll listen to that one. So program one channel for this repeater and one channel for this repeater. I like to do two, two channels per repeater because, like I said, every DMR repeater has two time slots. So I just put, I just create a channel number one for time slot one on this repeater. Channel number two for time slot two on this repeater. And that's it. That's the only two channels I create for that repeater. And then I can go and I've got the time I've got the time slots already set. So then I can go change talk groups for whatever I want. A lot of these Brandmeister repeaters only have one time slot connected to the Brandmeister network. They have the second time slot designated for like talk group nine or talk group 10 or talk group two, maybe sometimes. That is a local repeater only talk group. So you can monitor talk group nine on your local repeater on time slot one. And then you can go to time slot two and choose which talk group you want and turn on monitor mode. So that someone starts talking on a talk group that your channel is not currently set to, you hear that traffic, you look at the screen of the radio, you see where they're on, and then you go into the radio settings and you change it to that talk group and you can key up and talk to the person. So rather than creating hundreds of channels for your code plug, depending on what you want to listen to, you know, some people only want to listen to a couple of channels here and there. They say, well, Brandmeister's got 1,200 plus talk groups. And that's true, but how many of them do you actually monitor? I mean, my repeater, my backyard repeater that's, that's on my Seabridge 2.0 Seabridge, I've got... 70, 75 talk groups available on the Seabridge. Most of those are talk groups that other repeater owners have requested. In reality, I use like four of them. I mean, I talk on the I talk on our Texas statewide talk group quite often. Uh, a lot of times people will ask me, so so where are you hanging out? It's like, well, I'm hanging out on Texas statewide most of the time, which you can't really access you can't access it through Brandmeister and you usually can't access it through a hotspot. More videos coming on that later, by the way. So, so I, I listen to that. I listen to the R Finder talk group on Brandmeister, which is talk group number 31770. I listen to uh, the TGIF talk group 31665 over on the TGIF network sometimes. And then I kind of pop around here and there and do some, some Seabridge connected talk groups and a couple other Brandmeister connected talk groups. But realistically, you know, on a, on a given week, I might listen to like three talk groups. And that's about it. And say, oh, yeah, I've got access to 75 of them. And that's great. That way, if I ever want to go somewhere, I can. But on a normal day, I'm not really listening to that many. So why do I need to create 35, 40, 100 different channels for every repeater I'm on? If you guys are in a Brandmeister rich area, then Brandmeister's got access to all these hundreds of talk groups everywhere. Do you want to program a channel for everyone that you might someday kind of maybe somewhat use? I don't know. Seems like a lot of time wasted. So with only programming two channels per repeater, um, and you know, you could do more than that. If you wanted to do, say, well, I monitor five or six talk groups on my hotspot, then do five or six channels for your hotspot. Okay. But still on a single time slot hotspot, you can only listen to one channel at a time. And on a dual time slot hotspot, you can only listen to two channels at a time. Okay, now you can turn on monitor mode and you can have and you can go in the Brandmeister dashboard and you can set certain channels to, to static so that they're always on. Yes, you can do all of that. So there's ways to manipulate the system. This is not a open and shut case of you have to program it this way. But it makes it a lot easier because now when Texas, Texas added like three new repeaters last week. So now when Texas adds a new repeater, I just create two channels with the, both with the same repeater frequency. One on time slot one, one on time slot two, and then my, my talk groups are already programmed in my radio. And I can go and manipulate those channels and say, well, I want to listen to statewide on this one. I want to listen to the AMSAT Brandmeister channel on this one. I want to listen to TGIF on this one. I want to listen to the New York, uh, New York Metro wide 444 on this one. And I can go and change around anywhere I want to. So let me know, let me guys know what you think about that. Has anyone ever done this before? Like I said, I'm probably not the first one to think of this style of creating a talk group used to be i would create a talk and say okay well this repeater has access to 12 different talk groups so we'd create 12 channels set the time slot and talk group in the same frequency and color code and on all 12 of those channels and just change the time slot and talk group depending on how the repeater was programmed and then we'd move on to the next repeater well when you've got 120 repeaters in your state like texas does that takes a long time 
So who's thought of this? Has anyone done this before? Let me know in the comments below. Check out the description below for the links to download the talk group um, template that I put down there. 73, and we'll catch you next time.